Put that there. Hey, dude. Oh, wow, man. That's it, Jules. Good to see you again, man. SpongeBob. Appreciate you, SpongeBob. Bisma. What's up, man? So, I don't know if, you, if, if a lot of people know about this. I don't know if Yugoslavs do. This is called pašteta. It's basically, as I understand it, liver paste from, in this case, chicken Kyrgyzstan hello hello hmm Let's get everything set up. There we go. You're hungry now as well. Get something, man. Let's eat together. Small little pasteta, but... Let's load up on the goodness. All right, let's try a different one now. Mm. Yeah, all right, chuck another one on, mate. Salami.
<laughs> hey Vincent, how you going, man? I'm good. I am good. Oh, for sure, man. Stress is part of it. Um, it's how you manage it. That's the question. Um, and um, you could actually say that stress is needed as well for growth. It's just you have to manage it, right? Just like doing 20 sets of 20 is probably too much physical stress. There's a certain amount of stress in other forms. There's also, you know, too much. So work, mental stress is also a thing. So if you ever, if, if you ever overdo that as well, you're going to get in trouble. Yeah, I, um, I'll go wear lifting shoes, man. Oh, from Boston. Appreciate you, man. NFL is one sport that I don't know much about, man. Never got into it. Basketball, soccer, tennis. No, tennis to a lesser degree. Um, are the primary sports. Basketball and soccer, basically. And then, you know, in my 20s, I discovered weightlifting. So, you know, not that I watch weightlifting, but, you know, because of what I'm doing with the gym now, you know, how I'm exercising, you know, I started learning about weightlifting a little bit as well, but basketball is my home. Hmm. Yeah, Seahawks. I love the Seahawks. I love what they're doing over there. Really good franchise. Everything's going well. Yeah, safety's all right, man. Um, that's how I started. Years, years of years and years of squatting in the rack. Um, and then I dropped the bar a few times, bent the safeties, bent my bar. Oh shit. And, um, and then I was like, okay, I'll put the safeties up a little bit. And then I started hitting my weights. 
as I was going down. So if I don't walk out perfectly, I'm worrying about hitting the damn plate, uh, the, the weight from one side and then tipping me this way. And I was like, this is weird. I don't want to worry about walking out perfectly every time and then looking at my feet, adjusting my feet this way, that way, you know, one minute setup. Years, 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 years down the track when I got the SSB, I started looking at dimensions of the SSB and walking feet into the rack. And I realized that my rack is particularly wide. Very, very wide rack for whatever reason. So a lot of the SSB out on the market couldn't fit because that little bend wouldn't be able to clear the J, the J cups, the J hooks. <laughs> so then I kind of realized that the reason why I don't like squatting in my, my squat rack is my power rack is because my power rack is very wide. So years, years ago, I started squatting outside the rack because I got sick and tired of freaking worrying about hitting the plates as I was on the way down. So if you imagine the plates, if you walk out and you, see, you, you walk out a little bit kind of this way, so the bar, you know, you're facing it just a little bit to the side, that's going to hit the, the, the safeties on the way down. So I thought, you know what? If I fail, I can just fail onto the floor with my bumpers. And that's how it started. I unrack it, walk out, and I don't worry about where I walk out. Just squat. That's why I do it outside. What is the nutritional value of that meal? Probably not much. Carbs and a bit of protein. It's not the best meal. But when I don't have a lot of appetite, I'll go for something that I want to eat. Because deep down in my core, I'm a skinny kid, skinny jeans. Today, the way I feel and the way I've done it in the past, I would have no problem of fasting for the whole day. I don't know what it is about it, but I feel like fasting today. Obviously not the greatest for recovery. So on mornings like this, when I don't feel like eating, I say to myself, you know what, let's eat something crap, just to get some something down. And that's what I have today. Not that it's crap, crap, but it's not the most nutritious meal. Like I thought about making eggs again, you know, frying some eggs, cottage cheese, but I wouldn't have eaten much of that. And so <clears throat> moments like this, I'm like, cool. This is up next. I'll get some mayonnaise, some salami. I can eat that when I'm bloody full. So that's how I work around these issues. The SSB is, uh, hasn't been used in months now. It's all about phases of training and what you're thinking about, what you're doing. You know, I love the SSB. I love how it feels. I'll definitely go back to it, but right now, it's straight bar, MRAP sets, that's all on my mind. Hey Andrew, thank you man, hope you're having a good one too. The aha moment for me was just simply that I can get through the pain and I get through the work without pain. When I realized the little warm-up routine that I'm doing and the high reps of the MRAP sets, I pull up fantastic afterwards. And so no longer am I feeling worried that if I push really, really hard today, tomorrow I'm going to cop it, I'm going to have sore hips. I haven't had sore hips in a long time, man. So the aha moment is cool, man. This high rep stuff, you know, with the warm ups that I'm doing, I can go as hard as I want and I'll wake up tomorrow feeling great. To me, that is, that was the aha moment that I can push without pain. And that hasn't been the case for a long time. For a lot of people probably don't understand what it feels like to tip your toe around training. It's like, if I overdo it a little bit, I'm going to be hurting tomorrow. 
that's a shit feeling and that's summarizing a large po uh, po uh, portion of my training over the years it's like i know very well what i need to do to progress but i can't do it and so you're kind of always like tippy-toeing this fine line of like not too much not too little to progress frustration galore I don't know. A can of dip. <laughs> either, either, I guess. <laughs> Biz, my man, keep pushing. Keep stacking those reps. It will come. You're a lot, lot lighter than me, man. So if you start repping 180, man, that's going to be very, very impressive. What's my ethnic background? Yeah, I'm, I'm Balkan. Serbian. Nice. Busy, my man. Be very, very careful to not overdo it. MRAP sets are like unlike anything else, man. You have to be very, very careful. Recovery becomes a big, big component of the whole thing. Um, so one hard set once a week is probably all right. Bobby, man, you started off as a hobby. And theoretically speaking, it is still a hobby, you know, because I work, kids, family, responsibilities. You know, it's far from just eat, sleep and lift. But in my little moments throughout the day, I have allocated each day a time where I do this. So it doesn't consume me. But every free moment that I have, I do think about it. And I don't have a lot of free moments because of all the other stuff that I mentioned, but um, I'd love to be consumed by it. It's just impossible. I'm a regular guy, regular life, nothing fancy. Dragging a TV, man, you're in a good spot. If you feel like you've, you're at the top of your life, then awesome, enjoy it. My goals are, when I was 27, I became a father, you know. Um, my kid was born when I was 27. And that changed my perspective. Maybe that's something you're interested in. Um, a good paying job, good physique, that's great. But the biggest PR I ever said was having kids, to be honest. Belittles everything else. So my goals are seeing them grow, helping them. I'm excited for that. And um, on the side, I've got a side quest of these lifting weights and, you know, continue to be around them and, and support them. Um, I might not sound sexy, but it's truly, truly exciting for me to see my kids grow up and try and mold them, support them. My, my, my boy is now crazy about basketball, which is a dream of mine, obviously. And so we're constantly talking about basketball. The last few days he's been talking about John Morant. <laughs> we're playing 2K. So I'm showing him videos of 2K, of, of John Morant dunking and all these highlights and whatever. And so yeah, just that, that's, that's my life right now. Like it's really, really cool. In a few years, hopefully it picks up training. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say like what my goal is. There is no real goal other than just continuously being a good dad, you know, a good family guy.
I mean, I don't know what your setup is, man, but have you got a partner? Are you planning to get married? Are you planning to have kids? Have you got a house? Have you got a car? Have you got a lot of these things in place? Um, think about the next generation, man. Thinking about, you know, that's the ultimate. I don't know. The ultimate it is to have your own family. Um, whatever you feel right now is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. You're in a good spot. A lot of that is going to get belittled when you, when you have your own kids. When you feel that emotion of your kid getting born, man, it's, it's un, like, you know, I can't explain to you what, what it, what it, what it meant. You know, I can spend hours talking about it, describing it. You can't describe moments like this in life. Impossible. Yeah, so maybe try and work on relationships around you. Salami, man. Salami's on the bread. Cancer, yeah. Like my my oldest, my son, he um, he's like a mini me. He wants to play basketball, wants to lift weights. I had to force him not to lift weights. He's too young. He's seven. So I suspect he's going to go down the same path. He's going to want to dunk. He's going to start training with weights to get stronger, to get better at basketball or any other sport that he chooses later on, maybe. So I suspect he's going to be athletic like me. I mean, think about it. Like, you know, four years he's been watching me squat every day. And uh, as we all know, we are our environment. Just like when I was a kid, I was watching my dad do laps around the oval where I was walking around and playing my ball. He was running laps. He was doing push-ups. He was doing pull-ups. You know, all that stuff. So I grew up watching my dad in my formative years do that. And now my son is doing the same thing that I was doing, watching myself go about it. So I think when you surround the kids with a certain environment, there's more likelihood of them picking up that. So I suspect, you know, my family is going to be a sporting family. You know, when I thought about being a father, that's what I dreamed of. I dreamed about, you know, every Saturday and Sunday being sports days, you know, going to basketball for me on a, on a Saturday to play games and then Sunday training sessions. Later on, it became Friday games. Um, but yeah, my, my parents drove me around everywhere all the time. Trips to Melbourne, to state champion tournaments, Ballarat, Mildura. I can't remember all the other places we, we drove around. From the ages of like 11 all the way to 20, I was in basketball. Obviously, at 16, I got my license. Started driving myself around. But it was a uh, yeah, focal point of my life. And I always say to everyone, the best part of my childhood was playing basketball. Uh, that's that what that's the thing that I think about when I think about my childhood, because everything else surrounded that. My dad sitting there watching me every training session, every every game. My mom coming occasionally to watch these big games. My brother being proud of me, telling me you're gonna make it to the NBA and all that sort of stuff. I remember like the emotion, the excitement of me making Division One for the first time when I was under fourteens. Uh, I remember the pride in the family, like, oh, Ivan is a great basketballer, you know, like, it was just, it was like my identity was my, um, it was my pride, you know, um, and that, you know, that self-esteem carried on, I could walk up to a girl and talk like I'm a freaking Allen Iverson, you know, walk up and I'm like, what's up, man, Do you know, I scored 20 last night, <laughs> like, you know, I don't tell her that, but I have this confidence about me, so like the basketball confidence on the basketball court carried over to talking to a girl. It's like, well, you know, I'm Ivan, man, you know. <laughs> it was all delusional when you think about it at the end of the day, but, like, still, like, it's all, it's all very beneficial, you know. You know, it's like, don't you know, man, I, I scored 20 last night in Division One on the 16th. I'm the man. <laughs> you don't say that, but you deep down in your core, you have this confidence, you know. Being a grandfather, the next best thing to being a dad. Yeah, so my, my dad tells me all the time, being a grandfather <clears throat> is amazing. And I look forward to that, right? You know, definitely. 
family's everything, man. Like, when you think about it, at the end of the day, family's all. Family comes first every time. Alan, appreciate that comment. It means a lot for me to hear that. Thank you, man. Georgie, uh, the live started 25 minutes ago. So you haven't missed a whole lot. <laughs> it's real. Oh, no, she started squatting every day. You need to feel good. The freshest prints. Well done. I guess you could call it a pizza sandwich. It's a whole lot of bread, man. A lot of carving up. Oh, God, crazy. I reckon I'll go one more in me. One more, man. Let's get it. Man, mayo fills you up hard. So fatty. Get that fat up me. All right. Slap another freaking salami on. Slap it, he slap. Hey, Kenza, thank you so much for that. It's funny, um, I'm coaching my, my son now, the school team, school basketball team. And my brother came out to watch with his kids. And my brother said to my wife, you know, because I'm, you know, coaching. And he says, um, I would be really, really proud if that was my son. That was a really cool thing to hear, man. Really, really cool thing to hear. He's a good kid. He's a really good kid. That makes me happier than anything, man. It's not even about being a good basketball player or whatever. It's about, you know, the way he behaves on the court, the way he wants to pass to the kids, the way he plays defense. He's, you know, he's growing up into a good man. And, and that's, I think that's the ultimate role of, of being a parent. It's not about freaking growing an Einstein or, a, you know, some genius or whatever. Uh, it's about growing good people. You know, you want a good person. And you can be proud of that. And uh, I'm proud of him, man. He's, he's, a, he's a good boy. Can be naughty sometimes, like all kids. But he's a good boy. And he, uh, he's got a lot of meaning. He's got that uh, passion, that obsessive personality, um, that joy. Wears his heart on his sleeve, that 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 type of stuff. Uh, it's really really cool to see. Hey, thank you, Vincent, man. My PR on bench is 152 and a half kilos. Ima sude pa štete ne brine man. Suda ima. Pozdrav, pozdrav. Ja sam iz Petrinje, iz Hrvatske. Poslije rata smo otišli, živili smo u Suda, man. Suda smo bili. U Sakolama smo bili, u Vojvodini. Pa smo živili malo na Kosovu. Pa smo u Beogradu bili. Pa gdje smo još živili? Suda smo živili, man. Suda. Izbjeglice, man. Šta da kažem? No, the car's not stock. The guy before me worked the engine, forged internals. I put it on E85. What else did I do? Rebuilt gearbox. It's an old car, man. It's 20 years old, so it's had a bit of work. Yeah, that's how it's going.
Uh, thank you, Bobby. Soul Boy 60, that's cool. All of North England watching him play football. Best things of my life. That's amazing. That is amazing. Well, I can't wait. You know, I, you know, I'm getting a bit of a taste of it now. He's seven. He's playing sport now. But um, I'm loving it. Um, I'm loving the progress. You know, they've had five games now. We've played five games. And the progress has been insane. You know, the first game, they didn't know what, what was going on. Everyone's running everywhere. I'm constantly saying, no, guys, we're running this way now. Run this way. Everyone's around the ball. You know, no one's spacing out. People are afraid to catch. The kids are, you know, just raw, raw kids trying to, like, play organized sport. It's chaos. But now there's some structure. They can now dribble without, you know, traveling. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a beautiful thing to be on the sidelines after years of playing sport. To be on the sidelines and to try and tackle the game from that side and to try and teach and processing all that. It's, it's a really, really cool part of life. Uh, Hey, Miz, how are you, dude? How rare is a 4 or 5 squad? Well, I think it's very rare. Uh, it's very, very rare. Um, not if you look at social media, but if you look at the general population, man, like, I don't know too many people that I've seen in the gym that can score 4 or 5. Uh, it's a very rare thing. And also, if you think about it, most people are not 100 kilos body weight. So the the... The heavier the people, the easier it's going to be to score four or five. So, I mean, it depends what part of the world you live. But I suspect if you're living in China, you're not going to see a lot of people score four or five, right? They're smaller stature people. Uh, maybe even India, maybe, you know, just Asian people in general. But if you're living in, I don't know, Scandinavia or if you're living in Yugoslavia, you know, people are generally tall there. You know, 180 centimeters is not rare. It's just, it's almost like everyone's 180 centimeters. In fact, I'm a small Serbian at 185. Most of my family on my dad's side and even my mom's side, everyone's like 190 and above. You know, everyone's tall, tall, tall. Um, you know, there's people that are like, they're near seven feet in, in my family as well. So it's like, you know, for somebody that's 150 damn kilos, a four or five squat is not that impressive, right? If you think about it, like, but somebody that is 70 kilos, that is very, very impressive. Petar, um, mrtvo dizanje, što da kaže me, moraš, moraš naći gde si slab, koji dio tijela ti koči cijeli progres. Moraš naći, ne znam, možda su hamstrings, možda su glutes, možda, su, možda ti je core. Moraš naći šta je problem. I onda kad nađeš, onda moraš ga you know, izolirati, moraš ga napadati sa druge strane. Rad deadlift, da, da, da budeš bolji u deadliftu je jako, jako teško, pošto je jako, jako skupo. Ne možeš se odmorti od toga, to je jako, jako teško. Znači, moraš na neki drugi način, neke, druga, neke druge vježbe moraš raditi da bi došao do, do odgovora. Uh, a prvi, prvo je da nađeš šta je, šta je problem, gdje ti je slabina, moraš to naći. Bobby, yeah, the plan is to uh, hit 160 for a set of five today. Uh, this is another easy day. Tomorrow I'm going to go to war with the 180. AMRAP, so today I'm going to hit 180 for a set of five and maybe do some hip stuff, warm up the hips and that's it, another session that's less than an hour in, in duration, uh, another one, yesterday was like 45 minutes, today's probably going to be like 45 to an hour, something like that, 
just spent some time with uh, with some hip stuff, abduction stuff. You know, nothing's nothing crazy. Standing abductions with the band. Do that for for a bunch of sets, and then uh, work out one sixty four five, and then call it a day, and then try and get a good sleep tonight, and uh, attack tomorrow um, before I go to work. So um, that's kind of the plan. Let's see how it goes. Good morning, Dan. How are you, man? The GHD is very much gathering dust at the moment. Yep. Um, it's impossible to do anything. It, I mean, everything is gathering dust right now. Everything. I am not doing anything other than squatting right now. Uh, let's see. What am I doing? The, the I'll give you the complete list of exercises that I'm doing right now for the last few weeks. Always I'm doing the squats for AMRAPs. I am doing bench press for very little volume. It's like just a ticket on the page, basically. Squats, bench press, I'm doing lateral raises, and I'm doing hip warm-ups. That is it. My exercise selection is very narrow now. I'm trying to recover as best as possible. 99% of the freaking recovery is going towards the AMRAP sets. My training is very simple. Nothing to it. Everything is gathering dust. I look at the GHD every day. I want to jump on it like crazy. But I have to resist. I'm getting all of my work through that one exercise. And that is it. Um, I suspect eventually I will stop with the, the, the crazy AMRAP stuff. And I'll start doing singles, doubles, triples for a little period. And during that period, I'm going to go back on the GHD. But it doesn't make sense to do the GHD after dying on the squat doing an AMRAP set. So... Um, I've learned my lesson of doing too much. I've learned my lesson too many times, running myself into the ground. But now that I'm doing this like heavy ass work, like, you know, I have to recover. Simple as that. I can't have three hour sessions anymore. Most of the sessions are less than an hour. Get in, get out. When I'm there, I go to war every third day and then I get out. That's it. Um, there's nothing else to it. Am I taking steroids? No, no, no. No steroids, brother. Uh, oh, good stuff, Dan. Nice. Nothing better than eggs, man. If I had the appetite this morning, I'd definitely have eggs as well. Hey, Soulboy60, thank you so much, man. You have a good sleep, man. All the best. What, what am I doing for my hips? I am... Uh, abductions, just abduction work. So if, if these are my legs, I stand, I put the bands around my legs like this. So my feet are like here, this is my feet, and I just do this. That's it. That's basically most of it. Just this. Just hip abductions, standing hip abductions. I've done all sorts. I've done lying down clamshells. I've done lying um, hip abductions, just side glutes, man, side glutes. I've, I've made a video like a month or two ago now. Uh, describing the, 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 there's a display picture. The thumbnail is in me and my son in the in the in the, in the thumbnail. I'm lying down on my side, lifting the leg up, and he's pushing me down. And I'm I'm supposed to resist. It's like a physio uh, test. And I I've failed miserably. I have no strength in my lateral hip. Uh, so yeah, started connected those dots, and I started working on that, and my hip started feeling better and better and more balanced. And that's all I'm doing. It's, I'm, there's no weight to it. Like it's. Very warm up y, prehab -y type of stuff. That's that's basically it. Oh, thanks, Miss. Forearms. I haven't had a bit of work uh, for a while. Uh, Kevin, uh, calisthenics? Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've messed around with certain things here and there, but it never really took off for me. I don't know. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic. But uh, I find other things more kind of like exciting. More exciting than calisthenics. Yeah, I know, Bobby, man. 
we have now gotten used to how amazing technology is, man. You know, we're on the other side of the planet and here we are sharing this moment, you know, like it's insane. Wilfredo, grease the groove, man, that takes me back. Keep it up. Yeah, Ivan, um, the, the hips have been fine ever since I started doing the side hips. Uh, I remember when I was doing the marching multiple times in my uh, training career, the marching, I felt like I was getting something from that. Like it was definitely making me feel better, but I didn't feel like I was hitting nails in the head. So I'm raising my knee this way. Feels okay. But the moment I started lifting my leg this way, I was like, oh my God, this is hitting exactly where I need it. So yeah, you know, just hip abductions for whatever reason helps me. I know there's a billion people out there that can squat day and night and they have no pain with the hips um, and they don't have to do anything. I have to do a whole host of shit just to stay healthy. Do I drink? Yes. Uh, I'm not a big drinker, but yeah, occasionally I have a beer. <laughs> GHG. Currently running one of the Seeker Strength Boys programs and loving it so far. Nice, man. Good. Push it as far as, as hard as you can, man. I'm sure you're going to progress if you're still healthy and, and well balanced and all that. You're 17 and you want to grow more height. Because now I'm 6'3 and I want to try out for my soccer team. You're 6'3? I think you've got plenty of height, man. Especially if you're thinking about soccer. Oh, Vukašin, zavisi, man, zavisi što hoćeš. Sa 16 godina, 170 skvot je jako, jako dobro. Zavisi kakvi hoćeš da budeš, mislim, kako hoćeš da se pokrećeš. Ako hoćeš da radiš čučan na pola, kao powerlifting style, onda nastavi tako. Ako hoćeš da budeš weightlifter i da imaš ovaj... Pun skvot, onda moraš rad puno. Ja mislim, ja stalno govorim svima, ja mislim da kad se radi pun čučan, najbolje je za sve. Za koljena, za kukove, za leđe, za sve je dobro. Powerlifting skvot, ja mislim, je malo zajebanije na koljenima i na leđima. Pogotovo ako imaš belt i te sleeves i to sve, malo je zajebanije, ali i to se može raditi na dobar način, gdje se ne može povrijediti. Šta znam? Zavisi, zavisi, izaberi sebi koju hoćeš liniju da voziš i šta hoćeš da radiš, onda idem prema tome. Da ja tebi sad kažem da moraš raditi pun čučanj da bi napredovo, to nije istina. Možeš raditi kako hoćeš, ali ako budeš radio pun čučanj, ja mislim i powerlifting skoč će biti ok. Ali ako radiš samo powerlifting čučanj, onda nećeš imati ATG skoč. Znači, to je isto kada ono Louis Simmons kaže, ako ideš široko na čušnju, bit ćeš ok i narrow, ako radiš usko. Tako da, kao god oćeš, man. Šta god ti paše, šta god više voliš, tako radi, man. 100 push-ups, 20 pull-ups, goal before or after 300 kilos. Oh, man. You know, I gave push-ups a really good goal last year, I want to say. And I got to 70 fast, 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 you know, not full, slow, you know, I was doing this sort of stuff. I got to 70 odd, I think. And that was very, very difficult. Uh, I, I suspect I would need to put all of my recovery into the push-ups in order to progress. 
It's just very hard to do all of it at once. Henrik Svensson, evening. The hip thing, I wish it was the same with my knees. You got sore knees. It's funny how we all have our own thing that we fight. You got to work it out, Henrik, man. Don't, don't give up. You just got to stay with it and keep exercising, keep experimenting, and something will slowly start to uncover itself. Can you squat 600 naturally? Yeah, man. You know, of course. Absolutely. Depends who you are, though, right? Like, just like the four or five squat. It depends who you are. And, and, and you know, like, like I say, if you're a 140 kilo man, of course. Of course. It's just a two times bodyweight squat. Much more possible. But if you're a 60 kilo guy, 600 is probably not possible. So it, it depends on the situation. It depends on who you are and all that stuff. Your height, your, your, your frame, all that stuff. It all depends, man. 600 for everybody, impossible. Dobar si onda imaš i čučan, ovaj, ATG čučan, to je dobro, man. Ako možeš, treniraj oba. Ja, ja mislim, to bi bilo najbolje za, za tebe, što se tiče koljena i kukova i svega toga. Ako, ako imaš range of motion, imaš, um, ovaj, uh, imaš snage na svakom, ovome, u svakoj poziciji, ja mislim, to bi bilo najbolje. <laughs> Kevin, yeah. I can speak a couple of languages. Backwards walking. Yeah, I remember when um, uh, the Miso Toys guy came out. He introduced this backwards walking thing. And I tried it out a little bit when I was in my little sled phase with my tire. And I remember dragging that around. Um... Yeah, I mean, you can try that. I mean, my knees have never caused me trouble. So I'm not somebody to speak much about that. But, you know, if you... Yeah, what have you got to lose, man? Give it a shot. Hindu squats. Absolutely. Hindu squats is, is definitely goated in my uh, um, is, is definitely in, in, in the goat box for me. You know, something special about it. I don't quite exactly know what, but it always made me feel really, really good. The adductor stretch routine, uh, the, it's right here, man. There it is, can you see it? It's right there. It's, uh, once again, uh, I, I, I love it. I want to do it. Uh, I might get back to it. Um, but I'm kind of like really scared to change anything at the moment. Uh, back when I was... Uh, Back when I was um, doing this thing, my hip pain was bothering me. It was bothering, 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 bothering. So I'd stop that. I'm like, maybe it's this that's making it worse. It definitely didn't make it better. It wasn't the solution to get away from it. Um, but yeah, I want to do it. Like right now, I want to do it. There's a large part of me that I want to go stretching. But because everything is going so well, I have to resist this, these urges of you know, just freaking mindlessly changing exercises for no reason. I, I, I've never been like that. I don't mindlessly change anything. There's always a rationale process in my mind. And right now, there's I'm in a good spot. There's nothing's hurting. Why would I want to change something? So I won't.
There you go, Miz. There you go. Only one guy is with the 180. I think that's basically close to my experience as well. Um, um, Koliko mi je trenutno Max? Pa Max mi je još 212 i po. Još. Nisam ovaj... Dve godine nisam oborio rekord svoj. A ja mislim sad je puno viši, šta ja znam. Mislim, radim 180, 12 puta, znači... Ja mislim, barem 220 bi sad bilo, šta ja znam. Testirat ću ga, šta ja znam, jednog dana. Kad završim s ovom fazom. Yeah, man. Pa šteta. Thank you, David, man. Appreciate it. Oh, I'm getting sleepy now. Oh, it's always when you eat, you're like, you find out your true fatigue status. Oh, goodness. G. This is rubbish. Oh, what made me start? Uh, no, it wasn't to share. It was a document. Um, I never thought this was possible, man. <laughs> I never thought anybody would care. Started making, uh, started shooting my own, like, you know, recording my own uh, squats because I wanted to uh, see what's going on. Did that for uh, like a month or so. Uh, and that was cool. And I was just deleting the videos uh, as I went along. And then I was like, why am I deleting these videos? I'll just put them on the computer. Maybe like down the track, it'll be really cool to see where I've come from. You know, the progress I've made, that kind of thing. Uh, started doing that. And within not very long, man, like the computer started getting full. The memory started filling up. The phone was full. So I was like, man, what am I, what am I going to do here? Then I thought about getting an external hard drive. And then uh, I think it was my brother. My brother was like, Dude, why don't you just start a, open up a YouTube channel and you can upload it. Unlimited. Um, and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, the thing disappearing or, or crashing or the hard drive dying or whatever. It's always going to be there. And I thought, yeah, all right, no worries. Started uploading. Nobody was watching. That was really cool. And then like after a few weeks, I noticed there's, there's some people watching because I had a video that had like 10 views, 15 views. And I'm like, that's, I, I'm sure I didn't watch that video 15 times. Maybe I did. But anyway, started doing that. And then all of a sudden somebody commented. And I was like, oh shit, somebody actually watched. Damn. And then, um, yeah, I think around the same time I was like, you know, I'm, I'm recording myself squatting and doing all these exercises. Why don't I talk in the video as well? So then years down the track, when I look back at the video, I'll be able to see how I looked, how strong I was, all that stuff. But also I'll be able to know where my mind was, what I was thinking at the time, right? And that's, you get that through the talking there. So then I was like, cool, I'll do that. And then uh, just fell into it, man. People started watching. 
And then eventually, like two years later or something like that, I started the squat every day. Started doing that, more people started watching. And then, and then on 377, day 377. I don't know how many of you guys remember the story, but on day 377, boom. I wake up one morning, man, and my mates messaged me like a hundred freaking times, it seemed. I got all these messages on my phone. My mate stays up most nights a little bit later than me, or a lot later than me. And I open up, I'm like, the hell, did something happened, man. You know, like, he doesn't do that. And he's like, dude, your video's going crazy, man. Like, he's blown up. You know, look into it, look into it. So open up the channel. I mean, at this time, most of my videos would get like 5 to 10 or 15 or 20 views at that. And most of those views were me, you know. Um, and then, yeah, I logged on and I saw overnight I had something like 50,000 freaking views or something like that. It was crazy, just on one video. And because of that, I had like 1,000 subscribers. I went from like 300 subscribers after like three years of being like putting stuff on YouTube. I went from like 300 subscribers to like, boom, a thousand overnight. And that video continued going crazy, crazy for another week or so, two weeks. That video right now is at a million views. Obviously kind of tapered off at the end and died. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was crazy. Like it was just, um, just exploded. And just like that, I, I, I you know, developed an audience. People started getting interested in this crazy thing that I'm doing and how I'm going about it. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and then from that moment on, I probably had like a good year, I want to say, on YouTube. Something like that. A good year of lots and lots and lots of traffic. The algorithm taking all of my stuff to everyone. Uh, and uh, and then eventually started tapering off, just like the video, the channel started tapering off. The subscribers stopped climbing. Uh, and I can see all of this in analytics. You can see that, you know, the people that subscribe, the people that watch every day, it's like the same two or 3,000 people. Uh, even though the channel has 120,000 subscribers, 120,000 people are not watching the videos. So that's how it happened. It was like a one year freaking crazy period. It all happened. And, uh, and now I'm left with this like residue of the YouTube channel. Like, you know, the storm came, the algorithm came through, brought all these people here, took a lot of mo most of them away with it. It was like, a, you know, kind of like, a, you know, what Sam Sulek is experiencing. Obviously, he's 10 time, 10 levels up. But, you know, like he, he had like the algorithm gives you like a year, one year of like craziness. Everyone, this, everyone sees you, everyone discovers you, you're, you're hot for a minute and then people kind of see what you're about. And then eventually the majority start to leave. At least that's the how it's supposed to go. Uh, a lot of people stay with it and, and retain the audience. Um, but, yeah, I didn't. I, I, I mean, I continue doing the same old thing. And my, my, my motivation always, has always been not to do this for YouTube. That was never my, uh, that was never my intention. I, I, I never did this for YouTube. I always stayed true to do this because I like to do whatever I'm doing. I'm not trying to do something different. And, uh, you know, so people have gotten bored of the squat every day, and that's fair enough. People have come and gone, and but I'm still here doing the squat every day thing. You know, like I still love to do it. Um, there was a time where I was getting 20,000 views every single video. That was a crazy period. Uh, and now I'm getting every video 3,000, 2,000 views. Sometimes not even that. But I'm still doing the same thing. Like, you know, I, that's just me, man. Um, uh, and it doesn't bother me, right? Because I, I'm not relying on this income. Uh, I've got 
a job, you know, and that job is secure and that job pays the mortgage and that job is going to provide for the family. The YouTube thing was like a flash in the pan, came and go, went. Um, and uh, honestly, if, if I didn't have nursing, it would be very, very stressful right now for me because the, the money is basically not existent. Um, so it's kind of like that, you know. Um, that's kind of the story. Uh, days three six eight four or three are missing. They're, they're not missing. Uh, YouTube has uh, I don't know what point. Probably around that point. Uh, it's split up the normal videos with the shorts. So you click on the shorts tab, you'll see a lot of the days are on the short channel. Uh, still on my channel, but on the short tab. So YouTube kind of split up those two types of videos and lives as well. So now you have. Normal videos, which are longer than one minute, you have shorts and you have lives, um, and that's kind of how it how they've done it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a part time thing, you know. You, yeah, but there's there's lots of people out there who are making millions of dollars from YouTube, you know. Definitely, you know, there's there's people out there, but there's people out there making millions of dollars with other things as well, and. That's not the majority of people, <laughs> you know what I mean? The majority of people are not uh, making millions of dollars. Um, you know, I'm making hundreds of dollars. <laughs> um, but it's all good, you know, I, I never asked for this uh, and I've gotten it. Now that I have it, I'm grateful. Honestly, if even 100 people watched, I'd be like, wow, that's pretty cool. 100 people are watching. Like, I don't know. Still to me, that's crazy. Crazy. I'm not tired of making the videos because I'm not making videos. I'm lifting weights and sharing my passion. It's not a job. Like I, I'm not doing this because I want to make videos. Uh, I do this because I love training. And so for me, it's like, that's why it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like I'm doing what I love, and, and, and that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate thing, like, you know, if, if I was making videos for the sake of making money from the videos, then, oh my God, it's a job, you know, and shit, this job is paying really poorly at the moment, really, really poorly, I'd rather, you know, not train 20 hours a week and put 20 hours into the hospital, that's a lot more money coming my way than what I'm getting here, but it's not that, it's like, it's soul food, it's, it's fun, it's, it's enjoyable, it, it, it it's all of that stuff. Spike the algorithm with different car, different keywords. Uh, the algorithm nowadays is not about spiking it or not. Um, the algorithm is very clever. It's cl more clever than you and I. And so YouTube is a very, very advanced platform. So you can't trick people into clicking on the thumbnail. Even if you do, if it's complete clickbait, uh, the watch through rate will kill it. The moment they see that the video is not about what the thumbnail said, they'll click off and that, that's like cancer for your, uh, for your video. It completely kills it. So the only way to go viral is to actually have content which is interesting to people. So if people don't care about squat every day and people don't care about squatting and people don't care about any of the things that, that, that I'm about, they're not going to watch and my videos are not going to go viral. Uh, the reason why, let's say, Sam Sulek is really, really popular and his videos are going crazy is because there is genuine interest in Sam, what Sam is doing and what Sam is making in the videos. That is it. Like, he's not making... He's not going viral because he's some guru of algorithm. It's not. It's just he's genuinely interesting. Um, he's a guy who's doing extraordinary things. And because it's extraordinary, people are interested. Uh, and that's basically the bottom line. You know, the reason why I'm not more popular than him is because I'm not as interesting. I'm doing something that is not as risk-taking. I'm doing something that's boring, normal. I'm a white picket fence 
house with a family and three kids and a normal job, normal car, normal everything, and it's not exciting for people. The excitement is when people start to live different types of lives, you know. It's exciting to see somebody take steroids at 18, 19, 20, to have uh, Ferraris at 18, 19, 20, to have girls, to have vacations, all that, that's exciting. But if you're doing something which is completely normal and everyone else is experiencing the same thing, like, that's not what people are attracted to. People move away from that. I'm just telling you what the, 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 the audience is telling us uh, about everything based upon what's going viral. Sam is not going viral because he's a, he's a guru of YouTube. He's just, he's genuinely interesting to people. And when I say people, I'm probably talking about 16 to 24 year olds because those are the real users of social media. Uh, people that are like in my age group between, let's say, 30 and 40, they've got kids, they've got family, they've got lots of other shit going on. They don't have time to sit 20 hours on YouTube a day. The 16 to 24-year-olds have a lot more time. And so uh, they are the ones dictating the pace on what's viral. 50, 60, 70-year-olds, most of them are not. So it's like... What goes viral is what the kids say goes viral, basically. Yeah, Bobby. I mean, it is what it is, you know. Um, it's not all about money. Um, what can I say? Appreciate that, Squad Arix. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, uh, the Be Cool guy. Uh, these are all very, very, very nice things to... Um, Oh, Ivan, I've got 100 followers on Rumble. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, Henry, definitely. Sam is a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what makes him interesting. Inspector Mig. Yeah, um, you know, uh, let's see what the future holds. But whatever the decision I make, it's not going to be based upon what... I think YouTube is going to love most. No, uh, it's whatever I want, man. It's whatever I want, whatever I like, whatever I'm passionate about. Um, you know, the reason why I haven't changed the squat every day thing is because I'm not passionate about anything else. I'm passionate about squatting every day. That's the part of my life that I'm in right now. And that's how I live my life. I follow what makes me happy. Um, I don't worry about other people's opinions um, on mass. It's just like... This is, this is a very private, um, alone hobby that I have. I don't impact anybody by my choices in the garage. And so I'll take the liberty of doing what I, what I want. And, uh, and I just share it. That's, that's all it is. I'll get the spotted for sure. Yeah, the, the be cool guy. I, um, it's very hard to explain to people how cool it is to, to be a dad. Uh, uh, most people are not, well, the people that don't understand are the people that are not in that stage of life. But um, mark my words, when you become a dad, you will experience some things that you've never experienced. And... Uh, you will understand what it's like to love something else more than yourself. And that is a surreal thing. You know, um, it's a complete, complete shift in how you, how you view life. Your kids are like everything, man. 
Anyway, guys, speaking of the kids, I can hear them running amok. Um, I'm going to end it here, guys. Appreciate you again for chilling out with me. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'll go out. I've got a day off today, so we're going to do some stuff today. Um, appreciate you guys. Thank you. You guys have a good day as well. And uh, I'll probably won't catch you tomorrow the next day. But yeah, maybe three, four days from now, uh, I think. Let's see how it pans out. Um, I'll see you guys then. But anyway, the, the, the squad every day will continue. It's just the lives I'm talking about. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.